following video demonstrates how various types of data can be combined to form a model, which can then be turned into a finished drawing. Here we have some total station data read in, which has already been reduced. There's a hole towards the bottom, which is then going to be filled in in a minute using a GPS survey. So the first stage of combining the two data sets is to go to the Models folder, right click, choose New and Normal. If I give it the name Combined Survey. We'll leave the scale set to 500 for the moment. I'm not sure what scale the text would need to be drawn at, but we'll figure that out in a second. Under Surveys, we have available the total station data, so I'll move that over. And if I go to Points, we can see the GPS data, and I'll include that as well. So this is how we can create a model from multiple data sets at the same time. If I press OK, those data sets will be copied down into a combined model. If I go to the camera, surely enough we can see the GPS data now part of the original survey. First point of call is to check for features that haven't got codes. So if I come down to undefined codes, we can see that in fact there are a few codes. So if I cancel that, I'll just zoom in to an, to where, an area where I know they are. So I'll do that again undefined codes. We can see at the top here we have five occurrences of different BRD strings with the numbers 1 to 5 on the end. Here the number is actually a string number although the code is still BLD each time. So I will define them as BLD. Under point, we'll have a point. I put that on the buildings layer. Star plus pen dark green, grey. And I'll have the shape enabled and we'll use a three point rectangle for this. Again, if I make the layer buildings, I'll have it solid and I'll put them in red. If I press OK, OK again, and they're five, you can see that they appear. If I repeat the process for the other codes, hedge, define that. Put this on the layer greenery, the point that is. Underline, I'll enable that. Again, put that on layer greenery, style H for hedge. And it'll be in the layer pen, which you can see down the bottom here is already green. And it's going to be forcing the DTM automatically, i.e., it's going to be a break line. OK, that. So invert strings here. Add those as well. To line, enable that, put it on the layer features, style of say dashed, pen say green, and we'll force it in the DTM. If I go to height, I'll enable that. Again, put that on the layer semi points. Style height annotation. Pen so it in green underlined parallel leading the string. That leaves just the spot heights to do. I'll define them. So I'll leave the spot, the actual point as it is. We'll just go to the height annotation and enable that. Put that on the layer survey points as well. Leave everything else as is. Press OK. So we F5, you can see the annotation now has popped up on the spot levels. If I zoom to extents, you can see the hedges here as well. So looking down towards the bottom of the screen, we can see the GPS now needs to be attached to the uh, original survey. So we're breaking this string here. So the first stage is to include that point as part of that string. We'll do that by going to Features, come down to Lines, choose Apex, Append, click the end of the feature, click the point. The same it already has a code, what do you want to do? Do you want to duplicate it or recode it? Well, I'm going to choose recode and right click. Now I just need to join those two strings together. So we go to features, lines, join. Click the end of one string, click the end of the other, click the end of that string, and do the same for that one. So that's joining strings together. Before we continue though, we should check to make sure that our text is drawn on the right size. So if we come out of the model temporarily, down to drawings, we need to try and fit this model onto a piece of paper, and once we know what scale that is, we can go back to our model and make sure this text is drawn at the right scale. 
So to start that, we go to Drawings, do New, and I'll select Template, i.e. our user the paper space drawing already set up with a title box on it. I'll select this one, press Open, asking for a name. So I'll just call that Layout, press OK. If I click the new drawing, we can see the extent of a piece of paper. If I click the Drawings tab here, it tells us it's an A0 sheet. OK, now, to put a model onto the paper, we use something called a viewport. And we can see here we have one already. And if I click the screen, you can see the ghosting around the outside up here. That's the edge of the viewport. So right-click, go to Settings. I wanted to look at the DTM, or rather the survey, so I move that over. Go to the Sighting tab, and press Auto. That centers the viewport above the site. Let's scale it 1 to 100. I know that's going to be too small, so let's try 500 for the moment. Press OK. And as we can see, we can't get the whole site on. I go to settings again, go to sizing, try 1250. Okay, so at 1250 it works quite well. However, I'm pretty sure if we go back to our model and change our scale in here using Alt V 1250, our text is going to become so large, yes it does it becomes impractical to try and move it around. So I'll do is I'll set it back to 500 and we'll create two overlapping drawings to try and get the best of the site we can. So let me get one to 500 now. I'm going to sort out some of this overlapping text we can see here. We also have uh, overlapping features as well. So the first thing is to sort them out using a features break. Click that string there. That'll break the feature. So now we've got to sort out some overlapping text. So if I now go to points, come down to heights. First of all, I'm going to try and flip this outer string. So that puts the text on the outside. Do the same for this one. Got some overlapping text there, so I'll just delete the annotation on that point. So points, heights, because it's height annotation, delete the point height. Disappears. Some text here that's almost overlapping, so we'll try moving that one instead. So go points, heights, move. Click the point, and you can see it's pinned now to where the text is. So to reposition it, the text will move. Okay, so as I look in the center of my screen, I can see that there's a couple of points that perhaps need their text added up still. If I zoom into that, I'll ask Enforce to draw the text at real point size. You see cycle on here, and F5. The points have now been drawn at the size they will be when they're plotted out, relative to everything else. If I go points, heights, and enable dot on delete, as I delete the annotation from a point, Enforce will actually change the point style to a dot, so that there will be no confusion at a later date as to which points go to which piece of text, and vice versa. So I'll enable that. Then back to points, heights, delete. So if I now delete one of these points, select the BF, one of them's gone. So we now know if I delete that one as well, that that goes with that point there. Okay, so that's simple moving and joining and breaking strings. I'm going to create a drawing now that looks at this part of the model. So if I go back to the drawing I have already opened up, OK, to zoom into the part of the survey I'm interested in, I first need to change the settings. I go to Sighting, make the scale 500. That zooms in for us. And if I now hold down Shift and drag the mouse, you can see that the model moves inside the viewport. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave enough room down the bottom of here for a section I'm about to take. Let's move it up a bit more. And then I drag the bottom all the way up. Highlighting it makes it current. And if I go up to Tools, come down to Grid Lines Plot, I'll delete these other grids, don't want those. So I'll have a normal grid, i.e., basically a, a one grid every 100 meters in solid lines in dark grey. Press OK, and force renders the grid for us automatically. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a DTM back in the model and then section through here. So I switch back to the model. 